So as far as the engine breathing, we will go through the air intake of the, of the, of the vehicle. First of all, this is the, the, the air box cover. So you have the filter, but I want to draw your attention where we, where we breathe. We breathe behind the glove compartment at this height, which is pretty well about the height of where the cage is. So you can imagine that if you are in the water and you're st you start to suck water, it means you are pretty well in three and a half, four feet of water. So this is the air we breathe through here. We go into, into what we call the, the dirty chamber. If there's ever water going in, there, there's a drain at the bottom of that chamber, so you can just remove the little clip there, take out the little pipe, and the water will just drain down. And all the, the, the dirty side is kept by the filter. So when you go on the other room, the other chamber, what we call the, the clean chamber, the clean chamber is, is very clean. And then you go into the air intake tube, and then you go into the throttle body. And as I explained, uh, it's an ITC uh, system, so there are no mechanical cable from the gas pedal to the throttle body. All you see here is that wire. And uh, so this is a stepper motor that is uh, activated by the ECU. And I want to draw your attention also on the, how we breathe for the CVT inlet. You see that tube here. On the vehicle, it extends on the side. <clears throat> and this gives you the height of the air, the, the air inlet for the CVT. So once again, you're about that high, so you can envision a seat and somebody sitting in if you're sucking water through that CVT inlet, it means you have water just about here. So water, the air inlet is here. We go down here, down in the CVT compartment. This is sucking air. And for a belt life, you need a good circulation, air circulation from the intake in there and out. So the outlet goes from there and we, we exhaust the air at the very back towards the ground. So that flow is very important to keep the CVT compartment at the lowest temperature possible for belt life uh, durability. If we start by the front end on the feature, uh, we have a very large radiator. As I explained for the side-by-side -side application, we have an oil cooler on the motor and we have a, a very large radiator for uh, the the side by side application now if we move to for to the suspension it's a double a arm suspension we have 10 inch of travel in the front and 10 inch of uh, travel in the back the steering is like a car it's a rack and pinion concept and uh, we went for a, a quick ratio quick ratio meaning less steering input for more steering uh, for steering and uh, wheel angle um, as far as brakes are concerned we have a bigger we have a big disc 214 millimeter diameter disc with twin piston both on both wheels the caliper are the same front and uh, the same at the back the brake pads are the same so you only have to carry on or buy just one set of, uh, of uh, brake pads they will fit on all uh, on all calipers. As far as the, the front uh, differential, it's the same technology as we use on uh, our ATV. We call it Viscolock. Works really well on the side-by-side -side also. And uh, as far as the half shafts are concerned, we had to beefen up for the application a little bit. So we are now with the 1300 series. The 1300 simply stands for, it can take 1300 Newton meter of torque. So uh, we have increased uh, the, the size of, uh, of the half shaft in the front. As we move back towards uh, the inside of the vehicle, um, 
Here you see the gas tank. We have a, a very large gas tank. This is 10 US gallon. 10 US gallon makes it the largest uh, volume in the industry as far as uh, fuel. And our fuel efficiency is very, very good. If you compare engine size, let's say our 1000 with other 1000 and our 800 uh, and the other 800, we easily get 25 to 30% more fuel efficiency than the, the competition. So having a larger gas tank plus a better fuel efficiency, obviously the range that you will be able to do is definitely higher. Uh, if we move back again, uh, we, uh, we kept the same uh, technology uh, as the Outlander as far as trailing arm. We don't have a double A arm. The big advantage of having a, a trailing arm, it frees it, it free up space for the double bed the box that I will explain shortly. And uh, we were also able to make the anti-sway bar a removable for some application, rock crawling, for example. You can just unscrew the eight bolts and simply remove the anti-sway bar. And now the two arms will work totally independently from one another. Suspension, uh, 10 inch of travel also uh, at the rear. If we now move to the box, one of the nice feature about the box is you can open it from both sides of the vehicle. So some, some have only latch on the driver's side. On our side, we can open it up from uh, whatever the side. You see the cylinder, you have a slow opening of the box. And our box is very unique for a lot of reasons. Uh, first of all, you have two tailgate, which is very unique. If we start by the bottom one, the bottom one is separated from the top one. And uh, the way it's working, you have what we call a bed separator. When that bed is in place and the, the bottom door is closed, the bed separator is locked in place by the door. So if you have a lock on the bottom door, whatever you put underneath is locked. You can remove the tailgate if you want to. You just undo the little cable here. You put the, the door at 45 degree and you just take it out. And if you want, again, you can open this and take that out to get the full volume uh, of the box. And if we go in the box, we also included some nice feature as far as a hooking place for strapping materials in the rear box.